Welcome to Seoul, South Korea. I love you as bro. 사랑해, New York. Where exploring the vibrant streets isn't just a feast for the eyes. This is what I call a massive pancake. But a banquet for the taste buds. From pizza buffets that offer endless options to the irresistible charm of Korean barbecue, the comfort of slurping noodles, and the satisfaction of sinking your teeth into a juicy burger. Whoa. Over the years, I've compiled a list of the top 20 spots that promise delicious eats with without a hefty price tag. Of course, some of these visits dates back a few years, so the prices mentioned are based on my experience at the time and today's currency conversion, which may have changed. Now, grab your chopsticks, fork, spoon, or whatever you prefer as we dive into the delicious, affordable side of Seoul's food scene. Today, we're in the epicenter of cheap street food, Noryangjin. And it's cheap because there's a lot of universities around here, schools, so there's tons of students, and they're cramming for classes all the time, so they want something cheap, and they want something quick. So this area is just full of delicious eats. Let's see what we can find. Here, look at this. The menu, everything is under five US dollars. Look at this, this is a lot of kimbap. And Bobby's good. Just a simple bowl of uh, instant noodles with chilies and egg. For some reason, it tastes fantastic. Little kimchi, little noodles. And dip the kimbap into the broth. Very simple and expensive. Hearty and delicious. Again, you could just make your own instant noodles, but you got homemade kimbap, some good banchan. Get out a little bit from all the studying. Pretty cheap and delicious meal. And that noodle still retains a lot of chew, even though it's been sitting on bowl for a while, especially on a cold day like this. Oh, this is so good. After that, you can open up your jacket a little bit. See everybody walking around with one of these. It's like a waffle sandwich. I'll do dessert now. Oh, come that. Ooh, looks good. I think little blocks of cheese. I have no idea what I got. This is just one of their top sellers. The waffle is really toasty and nice. Nutella inside, it looks like some condensed milk. Ooh, look at that. This is what a waffle monster will look like. Mmm, oh, I freaking love this. No wonder, everywhere I looked, People were just walking around with this thing. Oh my God. So the little cubes of stuff I thought was cheese is some sort of frozen condensed milk thing. Oh my God. There's ice cream in here. Oh my. I thought this was like, you know, just tastes like a waffle with Nutella inside. Like who hasn't had that? But this one, oh my. The waffle is the toastiest, crispiest waffle I've ever gotten from one of these like waffle places. So you take a bite of toasty, crispy waffle and you get a mouthful of ice cream, chocolate, and that cube condensed milk, cheesy stuff. I still don't know exactly what it is. It tastes like a cross between like a ice cream and a, and a cream cheese. I kid you not. This is a must have. Oh yeah, come here and get this travel here and get this. I would. This is one of those food items I'm going to be missing and thinking about when I go home tonight. I'm literally in a state of my mind being blown right now because I just did not expect this to be that good. <laughs> this area is where all the students come. It's like a whole block of food vendors. And this one is in particular pretty popular. It's pancake and a hot dog. This is my ham cheese powder pancake hot dog. What's crazy about this is the outside of the pancake is really crispy. Inside, soft and airy. This thing is able to hold its shape because it's molded, almost like when you would fold a fortune cookie or something. This is one of the most interesting pancake hot dog things I've ever seen. Oh, and by the way, you guys missed this. I dropped it and I caught it. I'm a food ninja. It is what it is. Like, I will do anything to save my food. This is worth a try here. This is so interesting. The outside has got a thin, crispy shell. Inside, it just tastes 
like a regular pancake, a little sweet, a little doughy. Besides the mustard and the ketchup, it's crunchy coleslaw over a cooked hot dog. This thing's actually pretty tasty. I think the most unique thing about this is the outside pancake shell. I mean, the way he made it, it must be something with the batter, where you got that nice little crunch outside, but still able to maintain that pancake consistency inside. So I got this dish right here for 3,000. So what went into it, some fatty pork belly, whole slice of Spam, bunch of different sauces, and this glorious egg. And all that is sitting on top of steamed white rice. That is so incredibly tasty for $3. How do I not know about this part of so before? I mean, I've been here before, but only to the, uh, to the fish, fish yard, but this, this is what the treasure's at. The pork belly's great. It brings a little fat, which is always welcome when you have rice. There's a bit of heat in here to kind of balance out the fat. Of course, you got the creaminess from the eggs. And I didn't even invite the big chunk of Spam to the party yet. And what you do is you're supposed to actually mix it all together, which I didn't do. I'm watching the people besides me. I'm learning. There's a little bits of kimchi in here as well. And you gotta just mix it all up. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is three bucks. This is so worth it. Make sure that creamy egg yolk just goes everywhere. This is just so amazingly delightful. Mmm. Oh, the love. Every single bite. Creaminess from the egg. Tons of meat in here. Rice is cooked perfectly. You get a little spice, you get a little fat, a little crunch from the kimchi. This, for $3, you're getting a ton of flavor for the buck. It's like you went to an R sale and paid 50 cents for a masterpiece painting. Basically, an amazing food bargain. And this is exactly what I'm looking for. Fu <sighs> Army Stew. And there's really nothing heartier or more comforting, more perfect on a cold night than Army Stew. Also, this is one of the most affordable food items in South Korea. Army stew is one of my favorite Korean comfort foods. Uh, if you guys never had this before, this was created after the Korean War when food was scarce, so a lot of the ingredients came from army bases. That's why you got tons of Spam in here and hot dogs, and that was mixed in with, with anything that people had available, so ramen, sprouts, and it just put it all together and stewed it in a spicy broth. This is just the most perfect thing on a cold day. Usually you can get something massive like this for one person for about seven, eight, maybe $10. I mean, this is Hyundai area, so it's gonna be a little more expensive, but this is not an expensive food item, even though it, it looks ginormous. Inside the stew, little octopus, tons of ramen, tofu, spam, Hot dogs, rice cakes, sprouts, kimchi. Everything that will fill you up and warm you up is in here. Oh, I've been looking forward to this all day. First bite of army stew, whatever I'm in Seoul, it makes me so happy. I love so much. This dish. And what's also so good about this dish is that we've all cooked army stew at some point in our lives, whether we're in school or whatever, or we're broke, and the only thing we had access to was instant noodles and bits of hot dogs. Then you just boil everything together, you toss in whatever you had in the cupboards, toss in some hot sauce, and this is what you get. This is basically something that you cooked up in your dorm room or your first apartment that you couldn't quite afford. I mean, I remember having two rice cookers when I was in college. One of them, every Friday night, that would be like the gourmet night for me. It would go instant noodles, little bits of hot dogs, some scallions, whatever heck else that was almost expired that I, I could get for cheap at the local Kroger. Second rice cooker would just have rice. And I would just put this on top of my rice and that would be like the best meal I had that week. So eating this, not only because it's so good, it's a comfort food I feel like most of us can relate to and most of us can take a bite of this and be like, oh yeah, 
I remember those days. I mean, typically we wouldn't be able to afford the little octopus or be able to find that anywhere in this great state of Missouri. But everything else, the spam, the little hot dogs, definitely. I can already feel the sodium attacking my hands. This is a good conclusion to any food day. Any food day. And then with this, you're gonna be really happy and you're gonna sleep really well. Here it is. All you can eat Korean buffet, 7,000 won. Not a bad spread. That is delicious fermented bean soup. Nice tofu, good veggies. So on the, on the buffet, there's a lot of things. There's probably around four meat-related items, one of which is the jajangmyeon. I'm telling you guys, this is not bad jajangmyeon. Good seaweed salad. I know I'm praising like things that may seem pretty ordinary, but it's spectacular. A little sprinkle of chilies. Love the crunch. Love the aromatic sesame seeds. It's a rare occasion. I compliment salad, so. You know it's gotta be good. They got this uh, massive tray of bakogi. A little overly sweet for my taste, but juicy and tender. I think if you're a vegetarian, you would love this buffet. I mean, all the salads I've had, I have to hook. I think this is a fried fish. Mmm. Excellent. Tremendous crunch on that fish. Everything I've had so far, quality. This is the place I always come to whenever I'm in Korea. 12,000 won will get you unlimited spicy pork galbi. Check it out. And every cut of meat you get once you get the all you can eat is, is less than ten dollars. And the meat quality, again, excellent. Short rib is just tremendous. Anywhere you go, if they offer short rib, get it. The galbi. This is why I'm here. They got two types of galbi. One is marinated, covered in garlic. The other, the spicy one, that's a coming. Gotta save the VIP for the grand entrance. Not so good. It takes a special kind of meat when it overshadows the beef that's on your grill, but pork, that thing definitely does. It's tremendously juicy and they cut it really thick, so the juice is just retained in here. Little sweet, tons of smoke from the charcoal. You don't need to dip that in anything. Only route, that thing needs straight from the grill to your mouth. All right, the star has arrived. Spicy bagogi. This is what you come here for. If you can't intercept them before they bring you the first uh, order of like the regular bagogi, start with the spicy because you want to start with it, you want to finish with it. This is it. The reason I always come to this place. Oh yeah. There's a lot of really cheap pork, all you can eat barbecues in Seoul. They're all average around like 10, 11, 12 dollars. Come here and try this. So much spice. Juice is amazing too. It's rare where you can like, where you find like pork where you can eat so much and still feel like you want more. Cause usually the meat is so fat. This is slap me in the face good. There's some parts of that galbi. I got little pieces of cartilage too. Oh, that's a nice chew. All you can eat Korean buffet, about five dollars. There's quite a lot of dishes on the buffet. It's a five dollar buffet, so not really expecting much. There's three meat dishes and then a bunch of veg dishes, some banchan as well. Everything is homemade. Little chewy, crispy little fish with sesame on it. That's awesome. 
Also, the kimchi is extremely spicy. And the meat dishes, a little bulgogi, spicy bulgogi. This thing's slightly sweet. Cold chili peppers in there, which brings the heat. The flavor is really, really nice as well. Ooh, that brings way more heat than just gochujang. Mmm, and I like the fact that there's a ton of fat on this pork. This is definitely a little local seafood. If I came later, I don't think I could have got a seat. All right, round two. This looks like spicy pepper beef and cabbage and blood sausage. Got the rest of the bun chun. Basically got the rest of whatever I didn't get last time. Seaweed, fish cake soup. Fish cake is so tender. More bulgogi. Wow, this blood sausage looks so good. Mmm. That might be the best thing out here. Spicy, yummy blood sausage. And this pepper steak, this tastes more like tofu. I mean, if you really wanted to get by, kind of budget and soul, places like this is how you do it. I mean, super delicious homemade food. It's not even like you're eating at a cheap buffet. The food doesn't taste as good. This is delicious homemade food. And it'll leave you very, very satisfied. I am looking, I think is this place right here. Barbecue for about $6. So basically Korean barbecue for about $5. This is a cool place. Got a water of the pork belly, which again, runs for about $5. Kimchi, sprouts, lettuce, and here it is. At the pork belly, kimchi. Put it on the bottom, and the cooker is slanted. So when the pork belly cooks, all that nice fat is gonna just flow all over the kimchi, and that is gonna stir fry the kimchi with pork fat, making it even more delicious. Perfectly charred, tender pork belly, little sauce. Eat it with the stir fry sprouts and kimchi. We got two orders of pork belly, so about 10 bucks. Unlimited kimchi, sprouts, all the bunch on you want. Stir fried all that up with some garlic. Oh man, this is a delicious pork belly. Mm. My advice, 100% throw the garlic on that. Best way to eat this, dip the pork belly, couple of garlic, some stir fried kimchi and sprouts. And the kimchi and sprouts are so good because they're cooked in all that nice pork belly fat. Another reason why I love this country so much, if you wanna go for some super quality, beautifully marbled beef, you can do that. We'll just go to a local restaurant and get a pork belly barbecue for about five bucks. You can do that as well. And both places are gonna taste exceptional. I love walking around Sinchon. This area has got so many hidden gems. I'm burning this a little bit right now. And the quality of pork they use is so delicious. Again, no gaminess, nothing like that. It's just pure, good quality pork. Again, cook the kimchi and the sprouts in all that nice pork fat. That just makes everything taste so much better. If a la carte isn't your thing, you can easily find an all-you-can-eat barbecue buffet for about 13,000 won, so about $10 around here too. So this area really is the place to go if you want some good, inexpensive food. Oh, this is good. Let's see what else is on the menu. This 
So everything on the menu is pretty much four or five dollars for a water. So got some pig skin and I just kind of randomly pointed. So we'll see what else shows up at the table. Pig skin, a little green powder. Oh, that is nice and gelatinousy. Eat it with some kimchi and some sprouts. Mm. Put some roasted garlic on that as well. And a bunch of them, they always replenish. And that's like a meal on its own. Mm. Pixing is one of my favorite things to barbecue. Only mistake I made, I should have put on an apron. Splashed in my favorite shirt. Oh, I asked for a cold noodle too, which is about 375 for a bowl of cold noodle. You might have missed it though. I think instead of the cold noodle soup, I accidentally ordered the soybean soup. Mm. That's good though. That sucks. They actually, all places like this usually have aprons. So this is my fault. Amateur move, really. Here we are. This is a place owned by a Korean celeb. This place is incredible value. All you can eat Jaja Man for about $5 at once. So around $3.50 for this noodle buffet. On top of that, of course, Kimchi, radish, also fried rice. Jajangmyeon looks delicious. They start you off with a massive, massive bowl. All you can eat Jajangmyeon for about 350 US dollars. This is so crazy. This is so freaking good. This might just be the best noodle deal in all of South Korea, hands down. Noodles cook very well. It's got such a nice chew to it. The sauce is deep, rich, earthy, and delicious. A little sweetness from the caramelized onions. There's bits of pork, tons of umami in this bowl of jajangmyeon. The noodle is really, really good. Mm -hmm. Texture is perfect. The jajang sauce, not overly sweet. If it feels a little too rich, chase it with some kimchi. Oh, and the kimchi has shreds of pork in there as well. I'm not sure if the price is affecting my appetite, but this is as good of a jaja mint as I've ever had. I mean, everything about this sauce, the noodles, you just want to keep slurping this thing. Ooh. Grab a little bit of chili powder, add that in for some additional heat. And what I see people doing is taking the jaja sauce, Mix it with the fried rice. Yeah, the sauce goes really, really well with the fried rice. Drop in a little kimchi. This is so freaking good. Also, chase your jajime with some raw onions. Juicy and sweet. I definitely recommend adding some chilies in here. Make this a little spicier. Add some kick to your jajangmyeon. And they have other stuff besides jajangmyeon. If you want all you can eat jumbo, which are Korean spicy seafood noodles, that's seven dollars a one, so about five bucks. All right, that's a pretty good deal too. And when you're ready for a second bowl of jajangmyeon, just go up to the counter, speak to the manager. That's me that. And get yourself another bowl. I think after a couple of bowls, instead of the bus, I feel like I need to walk home happily though. Every seat in this place is taken. So you go down a line and there's all sorts of different dishes from banchan to meats rice to soup to noodles. I got a little bit of everything. Spicy tofu. Mm, this is really good. Tender tofu. A lot of heat. Chase it with some cold noodles. Meat options. There's Hamburg steak, which is very nice. And the soup is pig blood soup with sprouts. Oh, this is awesome. 
Ooh, this thing is really, really spicy. Nice crunch from the sprouts with scrumptious chunks of blood. Food quality here is really, really good. What's really impressive about this place, well, besides the fact that there's literally about 100 people here and they just opened up, it's only about $6. And you can get as much as you want and there's unlimited beer. There wasn't a lot of uh, chicken options when I got to the chicken. This is like, I think, sweet and sour fried chicken. The chicken is phenomenal. I mean, this thing's got a ton of flavor. Really crispy, spicy, sweet, and savory. The chicken's freaking fantastic. Chase up with some cold noodles and kimchi. I got a lot of these giant chunks of ribs. I can't believe this buffet is only $6. Everything is so freaking good. The common theme here seems to be spicy. A lot of spicy items here, which is what I love. Tender ribs, a lot of heat. A lot of flavor as well. That goes so well with the purple rice and the soup. This soup is absolutely phenomenal. So much blood in every single bowl. And what people usually do, they usually just pile everything they want in a tray one time. It's a giant tray, so this thing can fit a ton of food. Oh, that was a satisfying, comforting meal. I mean, everything tastes like it came out of mom or grandma's kitchen. I've been to a few of these really economical buffets. I think this place, 100% best quality. Usually there's not that many meat dishes here. There was chicken, humpback steak, giant pieces of ribs, all delicious. A lot of spicy items. My tongue is still tingling. The soup is awesome. The fried chicken is ridiculous. If you ever do come here, definitely get a lot of that. And I'm in this area where there's a lot of office buildings. So it's mainly office workers going in for a quick meal but for around six us dollars the flavor quality the variety you're not gonna beat this place so if you're in seoul you want to get some quality korean comfort food that's the place highly recommend next place i'm going to i came all the way to hyundai for this This is a very popular skimmin place. So if you just want to come here and get a regular bowl of skimmin, it's only 9,500 won, which is about seven US dollars, making this incredibly affordable. I jazzed it up a little bit. I got a thick piece of chashu. I got an egg as well. But even this combo, it's about 10 bucks. And look at how thick this piece of chashu is. Wow, beautiful golden color on the outside. Giant layer of fat. It's just beautiful, and the noodles are glorious looking as well. Glistening and gorgeous. So I asked for spicy, so there's some chili powder on top as well. This noodle is grabbing onto that dipping sauce so well. This is freaking fabulous. Bowl of skimming. The noodles are so scrumptious. You taste hints of sweetness from the wheat and the texture, just absolute perfection. The dipping sauce is rich and thick. And it's just an absolute mommy explosion. The dipping broth, you definitely taste the anchovies. Oh, and the chilies they put in here. They're not messing around. My whole tongue is on fire, but you never want to stop eating these noodles. Mm. Egg is deliciously creamy. Look at the here. Yeah. Mm, my God. Holy pork. This is one of the greatest pieces of chashu that I ever laid on top of noodles. I kid you not, this whole thing, the lean meat, the fat part, the whole thing just dissolves as soon as it goes inside your mouth. There's so much flavor, the texture is absolutely perfect. I don't think I've had skimming here in South Korea yet, and this has just exceeded all expectations. There are a lot of places like this restaurant here where you can get any one of these menu items and a set of barbecue beef for about 9,000 won. So here you can either get cold soup noodles with meat, no soup cold noodles with meat, or a bibimbap with meat. Where you go for their winter season selection, you get a sizzling bibimbap or beef soup, or knife cut beef noodle soup with meat. Again, for around 9,000 won. Yeah. Mm. 
Usually I love some cold noodles with my barbecue, but I've been eating that for I think two, three days straight. So some sizzling bibimbap. Oh, this smells so good. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Toasty rice bits, crunchy veg, meats, mushrooms, scallions, with some spicy gochujang tying it all together. Combine that with some sweet, really smoky barbecue. Oh, this barbecue is amazing. That's so tender. There's a ton of smoky flavor in that meat. This is just the most amazing deal. Whether you're getting cold noodles or beaten up, like a combo like this, it's so filling and delicious. Off of the price of a Big Mac. That was a really good call. Getting the sizzling bibimbap. It just smells so good, it tastes so good. All sorts of different textures, spicy. It goes really well with the meat. Mm, and that meat. Every time you chew, that sweet smoky flavor just intensifies. I live in South Korea, find a place like this near me. Pretty much just go there every single day. This is by far the biggest all-you-can-eat pizza buffet I've ever seen in my life. The only other all-you-can-eat pizza buffet I've ever been to was the one at Pizza Hut, but not every Pizza Hut has them. And it would just be like about maybe seven or eight so pizzas and a little salad bar. This is intense. This is dozens of items. I count over at least 60 different items. The appetizer, non-pizza portion of the, of the buffet is just tremendous. You got blood sausage here. Tastes like Buffet blood sausage. So a lot of this stuff, obviously, they're kind of like fusion Korean uh, Italian food. This is carbonara glass noodles. There I say, I really like that. The sauce is creamy, extremely spicy. Like you would never find something this spicy in Italian food, but this is spicy. This is like Koreanized. A lot of added spice. They make their own potato chips. I see like chefs back there just cranking the stuff out so it's relatively fresh oh yeah this corn is intense it's like butter and i think this is like cheese sauce on top of this corn yep not a lot of cheese sauce it's good but also very saturated it just tastes like that cheetos cheetah sneezed in my mouth flavor wise everything's pretty darn good chicken skin that's delicious that chicken skin is really good. That thing is crispy, that thing is fatty, and that thing will make your day better. They have like all sorts of pizza, some trendy and some like traditional pizza. This is a bulgogi pizza and potato wedges. One bite. I knew this thing tasted off somehow. And upon closer inspection, let me show you what I found. Is that broccoli on this pizza? I knew I tasted my enemy. I have a little idea after a few bites exactly what this is. First of all, there's bulgogi on here, which is amazing. It actually tastes really good on pizza. Huge beef flavor. On the ends, there, there's some mayonnaise or some kind of sweet cheese. And then there's like cheese and broccoli on this. But besides the broccoli intrusion, not too bad. Time for round two. This is a sweet potato deep dish pizza. That's actually really good. I mean, it is, again, very, very, very starchy. But that's a creamy sweet potato. I'm so glad I could just take like a small slice of one of these pizzas. If you dare to eat like one full pizza of this, half of this, you don't need to go to the bathroom for the next month. This is the too much steak pizza. <laughs> so there's bacon on here and it looks like maybe some sort of bulgogi. There's corn, there's onions. Too much steak pizza. I really don't think you can ever 
have too much steak. I gotta tell you, there's too much steak pizza. It's definitely not a mistake. It's good. Whole tray of food, about 250. Put some sauce on your salad. Look at this perfectly cooked, crispy golden crust. Wow. Glistening meat in the middle. The outside is perfectly light and airy and crunchy. Just the most marvelous little subtle crunch. And I learned from um, what's wrong with Secretary Kim that this is the best part right here from that guy she went on a blind date with that, that wouldn't give her a piece of his katsu. The best piece, according to him. Mmm. That guy's onto something. That is the best piece. That's definitely the most crispy piece and probably the fattiest piece. And on top of that, you get some miso soup. Serving your rice, kimchi. Mm. I mean, look, this is not gonna be as tender as like a $15 piece of katsu. But at the price point, I'll come out to this place every single day. So two pastas, their, their signature classic spicy cream, and this is the olive oil pasta. And this pasta, $3.75. It's chili inside, there's herbs, slices of garlic. This thing smells incredible. Also, free pickles. Again, I don't think this pasta place is rated very well by people here. This is a really good pasta for the price. I mean, 375, noodles are super al dente, it's super garlicky, buttery. I like it. This is their signature spicy, spicy cream pasta. Oh, I think with sliced brisket mixed in too. Whole chili peppers. This is about $6. I think they put peanut butter in here. A little sweet and peanut butter in here. Super creamy and spicy. Again, perfectly cooked noodles. I mean, this is definitely better than anything you'll find at Olive Garden. And at about a third of the price, but without the breadsticks. I wish they had all of the breadsticks. Burgery. This place kind of looks like an in and out burger. And you can get a burger for around three US dollars. So you can get a big fresh burger for about four dollars, fresh burger for about three dollars. This thing is piping hot. Looks kind of like a smash burger. Tons of sauce, sauteed onions, lettuce, tomatoes. Whoa, this is a delicious, buttery, juicy burger. Beautiful scrumptious patty with a nice sear. Caramelized onions adds a bit of sweetness and smokiness. The buns are very, very soft and buttery. Like I said, Oh, buttery yumminess. You got the crunch from the lettuce and the pickles. The sauce is perfect, the patty is perfect, and for three bucks, makes this taste even better. So this is the typical set menu. The thin spicy pork belly with the soup. So this is about $30 for two people. Or you can just get the pork belly. This thing, this thing's delicious. It's another uh, fellow food vlogger right back there. One reason I love this place, Charcoal grill. Just like the all-you-can-eat buffet earlier, charcoal just tastes better. And the pork belly either comes in soy sauce, sauce, or spicy sauce. Highly recommend the spicy sauce. Of course, comes with unlimited banchan. If you run out of anything, there's the bar, just go fill it up. My stew is here as well, look at this. How hearty does this look? Mm. Ah, so good. Full of kimchi and little bits of pork. Actually, I shouldn't say a little bit. So much meat in here. Mm. The meat in here, the chunks of meat are so fatty and tender. I mean, you get the nice crunch from the kimchi, and you get a chunk of meat, that thing just dissolves on your tongue.
Mm. It was like taking a bite of that delicious smoke. Best way to eat this, gorilla leaf, meats goes in, more meats goes in, a little sauce, bundle it up. Just ridiculous. I'm gonna give you a gooey egg, look at this, to go with your meat and stew. That's just the best part right there. Usually in Hyundai, I like to focus on all you can eat barbecue places. Definitely make an exception for this. Like I told you guys, this Chinatown is mainly northeastern Chinese food, which involves a lot of flour-based like buns and dumplings and noodles. And also, it's a very, very meaty part of China. A lot of root vegetables, a lot of lamb, a lot of beef. So I got a lamb soup, because uh, on a cold day like this, lamb soup's gonna feel really, really good. Also, I got a beef noodle soup, because freshly made noodles is a specialty in Northeast China. I gotta give that a try. All right. I forgot, this is Korea. Sometimes when you get meat soup in Korea, they don't put any salt inside. They let you salt it yourself, which I find kind of, kind of weird, but a little pepper, chilies, salt. I'm getting there. Way more salt. Oh yeah, now that great lamb flavor shines through even better. It just warms your whole body up. It's really smooth, almost creamy lamb soup. There's a lot of lamb innards inside. I like a little organic flavor. That is great. I gotta try these noodles. Freshly handmade noodles, the guy's making it outside. Oh, this is delicious. Heck yeah, baby. Wow, this place is awesome. Come here and get some lamb soup and get some beef noodles. Satisfaction guaranteed. And the noodles soak up the flavor really, really well. Ingredients wise, this is pretty simple. It's beef broth, little scallions, a little meat. And the combination of the chewy texture and the flavor, the noodles just intense. Let's do more chilies and Chinese vinegar. This place just smells like how I remember a noodle shop in China would smell. It's just filled with that great lamb and beef aroma. Mm. Oh, this is fantastic. A little white pepper. So glad I got these two dishes. Again, when I was trying to order, I was mocked by the people working here. They're like, you can't order those two at the same time. They're both soup dishes. And I'm like, let me order what I want, please. Chase it with little pickled vegetables. Again, you can tell this is hand pulled because the noodle shapes and textures are different. And that's where all that great mouth feel and chewiness comes from. This is truly authentic Chinese beef noodle soup. Oh, this is so convenient. They actually have everything in English. Grilled chicken, marinated pork, whole pork belly, intestines, rinds. There's cold noodles for that, 5,000 won, soup, 3,000. There's soju, sodas, rice, okay. Bunchons, everything's here. Get yourself some scallions, sesame oil, and some salt.
And churches are so good. Friends are mad, it's just coming to South Korea. This place is so good. Right now, it's absolutely packed. Every single table is taken. The quality of pork is delicious. It's so nice and juicy. I love that it's charcoal. It makes such a big difference. The pork is so fatty and nice that I like it when I kind of overcook the meat a little bit. So the fat is nice and charred like this piece right here. Best way to eat this though? A little sauce, put it on the lettuce. I like to add a couple pieces of raw garlic and a little chili. Oh, that's good. Again, having real charcoal is so vital to get that great smokiness into the pork. I can do something like this. Huh? Also, this is good quality pork they're using too. No gaminess whatsoever. There's so much fat, and I love how you just crisp the fat up. I mean, that piece of fat is just dissolved on my tongue. This is a really good place to just kind of socialize. So you see a lot of people here with their friends just sitting, drinking, having a good time, eating food. I mean, honestly, if I lived here, I'd probably be doing the same thing. Next round, marinated pork, always awesome. But this right here, unlimited pigskin. This is the treasure right here. I would go to an all-you-can-eat barbecue if they only had the all-you-can-eat pigskin. Because this stuff is amazing. This is done. Oh, so good. So good. The texture is just amazing. Oh, oh, the marinade pork is awesome. Mm. When that thing chars up, the marinade just harmonizes so nicely. Mm. I highly recommend this barbecue. You're gonna like it. 